Hello everyone, welcome to 2025. I cannot believe it is the start of a new year. And I thought what a better way to start the year than giving you some tips on how to reduce lagging and game crashes. So I'm no expert. I'm very fortunate that my spouse or my romantic partner or whatever you want to call him, he is a software developer. So I have learned a lot of tips from him over the years on how to keep my game running smoothly and how to reduce game crashes and lagging in my game. So thanks to him, <laughs> I was able to make this video. So here we go. The first thing you want to do is check out the system requirements for The Sims 4. So if you go into the EA app and just click on The Sims 4, and if you scroll down right to the bottom after all the marketing, you will find the system requirements for The Sims 4. So this is the first thing I would do is check out if you have the recommended requirements for the game. So if you only have the minimum requirements for The Sims 4, it's a good idea to go into your game settings and change a few things. You might want to lower some graphics settings. So you don't even have to be in a save file to lower settings. You just need to go into options, into game options and under graphics, you can play around with all these settings. I have mine set to very high, most of them. But if you find your game is lagging and you only have the minimum requirements, you can lower these settings. You'll just have to play around and see what works for you and what helps reduce lag. I mean, you can put these all on low, you know, your sims, objects, it depends what you want. If you maybe want your sims to look good, but you don't mind so much about edge smoothing or reflections, you can lower some of, you can even turn reflections off if you want to. So you're just going to have to go in and play around with all these settings visual effects, you can lower that as well. And then it's a good idea to turn off uncompressed sims textures if you don't have the recommended requirements and post-processing effects as well. If you're working on a laptop, obviously you want to switch to laptop mode. And if you on direct X9, you want to tick that. So you're just gonna, as I said, just play around with these settings. You obviously wanna have the correct resolution for your system as well. So just make sure that's correct. I use windowed full screen because when they change to DirectX 11, for some reason when I'm on full screen, I cannot use the Windows key to tab to another program. So that is why I use windowed full screen, but normally you would probably use a full screen. You'll just have to see with that as well, that might help if you use windowed or windowed full screen. So that's the first thing you can do to help reduce lag is to play with your graphic settings. Play around, see what works for you. You might you might find that turning reflections off might reduce lag for you. It just depends on your system as well. And then just remember to apply changes when you are done. So after you've played around with your graphic settings and maybe lowered some of the settings, which obviously none of us really want to do, but it does help reduce lag and game crashes. The next thing you want to do is make sure you have some space on your computer. Now, the first way to do that is to obviously delete some files. So <laughs> I have many, many files that could be deleted on here. I'm just too lazy to go through. <laughs> through all these files and see, I'm sure there are many, many things that I do not need. But that is that is your, your first start is to delete files that you may not need. And the next thing you can do to reduce space on your computer is a disk cleanup. There we go. And you just need to choose the drive that you want to clean up. So a disk cleanup will scan your hard drive and get rid of any files that you don't need. So you just need to click OK and it does it automatically for you. So the next thing you want to do once you've deleted old files is you want to empty your recycle bin. So you just need to click on that and highlight everything and delete and it will ask you are you sure you want to delete these 
items and you say yes and there we go we have an empty recycle bin okay so you've deleted any old documents you've emptied your recycle bin so what you might want to do as well if you go into your electronic arts folder mine is under my documents sims 4 and you want to if you're using mods you are going to get these last exceptions so you can delete those that will also free up some space on your computer and it does actually make your game run a lot more smoothly if you delete these every single time off i usually do mine after i've played once i exit my game i come in and delete any last exceptions and also the local thumb cache i delete those as well and any anything in relation to mods i normally delete this wicked whims i have an exception here i don't know why but let's delete that i don't normally delete all these other things i think you can i don't worry to delete them but i do delete last exceptions and local thumb cache you can also delete the online thumbnail cache over here just delete those it just frees up a little bit of space and keeps your game running a little bit more smoothly if you delete all those files so another way to make space on your computer is to delete some of your saved games i have many 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 <laughs> many saved games and i don't want to delete mine um, i'm very fortunate i have enough space on my pc for all these saved games but if you don't and you feel that you can delete some of them you know you can just click on the save file and click delete obviously if you don't want to do that and you like me and you want to hang on to all of your sims that you've ever made in your entire life then you could move your save games to an external hard drive or maybe just move the ones that you are not playing with at the moment that will free up a lot of space you could just put save games onto an external hard drive and when you need them just move them back into your electronic arts folder so that is another way you could make space on your computer is to move your save files to an external hard drive the ones that you aren't playing with anymore so one time in the near future if you may want to suddenly you get the urge to play with a save file that you haven't played with for five years then you know then at least you've got it on a, another hard drive and you could load it, load it up, place it into your electronic arts folder and play with that. So to do that in your electronic arts folder under the Sims 4 under save games you would have to just check the corresponding dates and time of your save file and you would want to for instance say it was this particular file on the 28th of December and you would just move those onto an external hard drive so you would have to know exactly which files you want to move so another way you can help reduce lag in your game is before you go into your game make sure you close any unused programs so i can close my browser obviously i need my recording software on but i can even close the ea app and so everything else is closed and then I can go into my game. So just remember to close any unused programs before you start playing The Sims. That will help reduce lag. And that goes for your antivirus software as well. I, before I had my computer upgraded, I, I had a, I used to have a terrible lag in my game, and I discovered it was the antivirus software I was using. So. I just used to disable it when I was playing The Sims and then I just had to remember to enable it when I was finished playing. So that can also be an issue, um, antivirus software, you can disable it when you're playing but just remember to enable it when you quit your game. And another thing that can make your game lag is if you're using a G-Shade or a Reshade, when it's not in use you might want to turn it off. Um, Obviously, if you're using it on a permanent basis, then you can't do that. So you'd have to do some of these other things. But if you're just using G-Shade for screenshots or Reshade for screenshots, you can turn it off when it's not in use. Um, it's just a matter, I think it's, uh, mine is um, Shift F3. So you can turn that off 
and obviously to turn it back on again it's just shift F3 so that does help if you are only using uh, G shade or reshade for for screenshots or in a very small part of your game then you can toggle that on and off that does help I know you have to have quite a strong system to use those kind of things so if you are using them and you find that do make your game lag then maybe just toggle it off when it's not in use so the next thing you want to do is maybe update your graphics drivers maybe they need to be updated and that's maybe why your game is crashing or your game is lagging so to do that you just need to type in the Windows search bar device manager and you want to go to display adapters and just right click on them and update your drivers and Windows will search and see if they need to be updated and also make sure that your Sims 4 game is up to date as well so you want to make sure that your graphic drivers are updated make sure your Sims 4 game is updated and you want to make sure that mods and CC or custom content are up to date. Broken mods and broken custom content are often the causes of Sims 4 game crashes. Not always, but a majority of the time if your game is crashing, it's more than likely a broken mod or broken custom content. So most modders are very good at updating their mods after a major game update because um, mods often break when there's a major game update but most modders are very good at updating their mods so just make sure that your mods are up to date all the, all the mods that you use and if you've done that, you've updated your mods and your game is still crashing then it's best to disable your mods temporarily. So go into options, go into game options, under other, just untick enable custom content and mods and apply changes obviously and then quit your game and when your mods are disabled and you go back into your game, if your game is not crashing anymore, then you know it's a mod that is the cause of the crash. Then what, you, what you're going to need to do is you are going to need to do the 50-50 method to find the broken mod. And so what you want to do is delete that broken mod or just move it out your game temporarily until the modder can update it. So before you do this, just make sure your mods are enabled because you're going to have to keep on going in and out of your game to find a broken mod. So make sure your mods are enabled when you are doing the 50-50 method. So you're going to go into your documents folder, into electronic arts, into the Sims 4 and into your mods folder. So I have 455 mods in my mods folder, which is actually not a lot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight about, about half and I'm going to place half of my mods into a temporary folder. So I have a Sims 4 mods and CC folder, which I use specifically for this purpose. And the other one, the Sims 4 mods, this is just a temporary folder I use to place mods that I want out of my game temporarily. So the Sims 4 mods in CC is specifically for the 50-50 method. So I'm going to place half of my mods in here and then I'm going to go back into my game and if my game is not crashing anymore then I know that the mods that I just removed, the broken mod, is in that batch of mods. So if my game is still crashing, then I know that the mod that is causing my game to break is still in the mods folder. So you just have to keep on doing the 50-50 method. It's a bit of a headache and you keep on having to go in and out your game and till you find that broken mod. So when you find the broken mod, obviously remove it from your game. You can put it into a temporary folder to remind you to update it maybe. But obviously if it's not updated then you obviously can't use it anymore and you'll have to find maybe another mod to replace it. The 50-50 method is a bit of a headache but it is worth it to find a broken mod. So something else you can do to keep your game running smoothly is to repair your game and you do that through the EA app. 
so just make sure you're in your library and on the sims 4 you're going to click on these three dots just make sure your game is not running because the repair option won't show if your game is running and you just click on repair and that will verify all the game files for you if you bought your game through steam you will have to verify game files on steam so that is another way to make sure your game runs smoothly is to repair your game so if you've tried all these things and you're still getting some crashes and some lag, maybe even you're not even using mods and your game is lagging, sometimes it's a good idea to upgrade your hardware. And it might just be a matter of getting a new graphics card. Um, that helped me a lot. I got a new graphics card and a new hard drive and it made a huge difference. Obviously that's an expense not everybody can afford to do. But with a new graphics card, I was able to increase my graphics settings to the maximum. Whereas before, I used to have all of these on low and medium. But with a new graphics card, I was able to, to increase to the max. So anyway, so I hope that helped you a little bit. Helped you maybe give you some tips and ideas to reduce lag and crashes in your game. And let me know in the comments section if there's something that I haven't mentioned that, you know, that you use to reduce lag and crashes. I know a lot of people use the last exceptions mod, which helps to find broken mods and so on. So just let me know if there's anything you do to make your game run more smoothly, to reduce lag, to reduce crashes. And enjoy this new year, this 2025. I hope it brings a lot of good things for everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye.